What was that? How many? How many cylinders? Eight. Eight cylinders. Soft close. That's cute. You join me inside the BMW M760i. This is the flagship sedan from the Bavarian brand, and not just the flagship sedan, it has the flagship motor, a twin turbo V12. Yeah, this is a veritable wolf in silk pajamas. And like silk pajamas, it's terribly expensive. And like a wolf, it's very thirsty. Yeah, this is a particular car with not so much the broad appeal of something like a Honda Civic. This is a particular car for a particular buyer. One that wants it to be known that they've been successful in life, but sort of wants it to be a mystery how successful. Like to the average Joe, this is just a really nice sedan. But to those in the know, it's a $160,000 car that makes over 600 horsepower. It's particular, but that buyer, that very specialized buyer, has options beyond just the M760i. They also have the Mercedes-AMG S63 sedan, which yes, it has a twin turbo V8, but the V12 version of that car, the S65, costs significantly more money. So we're gonna, for the sake of price, just keep it to the S63. S you also have the Audi S8, yet another twin turbo V8 version. Makes a little less power than these cars, uh, but is also less expensive. Which option should this particular gentleman or gentle lady choose? Well, that we're gonna find out today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is, the 2020 BMW M760i X-Drive. Gotta throw that in there. It's the all-wheel drive. This one is painted in Aventurin Red Metallic. It's an almost $2,000 color option. And I'll say that the red part of the name is somewhat misleading. It's, it's really more of a mahogany, wouldn't you say? Can't see the metallic flake on the surface of the paint. I like that. But the color itself doesn't really do it for me. It, it makes the car look old. It's like a dried prune color. You don't want to be the guy or gal driving the dried prune colored car. You don't want to be called a dried prune. So yeah, the color doesn't do it for me. But if you like it, I'm not trying to insult you, let me know in the comments. Tell me you like the color. Would you like it in this color? Would you like it like all black? Would you like it in a darker blue? I want to hear from you and your darker blue. Now, the first thing you're asking me about this one right here is why are you showing us a 2020 model year car? The year, the calendar year is 2021. They're releasing 2022 model year cars now. Why show us a 2020? Well, to be perfectly frank, BMW, and I get my vehicles directly from the automaker, BMW didn't have a 21 on hand to loan me for the review. So that's what we got. But the more important thing is that 21 and 22 model years don't introduce any significant changes to the car. The 21 model year deleted the CD player from the dashboard, so we'll see a CD player in this car. They added standard heated front seats and heated front armrests, which this vehicle has as options anyway. And the self-park feature becomes a standalone option for the 2022 model year. This car has that. As, stand, or as an option. So really, you're looking at this car and it's gonna look the exact same as a 21 or 22 model year. So this review will be applicable to those future model years. Just getting that out there. Now let's go into the exterior design. All M760Is are going to have this cerium gray trim, sort of like a platinum color that I like. It, it works with the exterior color, would look even better if the car was black or blue, personally. It is a large, large grille. Is it disproportionate to the size of the vehicle? No, and that's why I think the grill, the very large grill works on the X7 because that's a large vehicle. It has a large grill, it just kind of works. And large grills are just where the industry is going. So I'm gonna give it a pass. At first it bothered me, now, not so much, and also it doesn't bother me as much because it has the classic BMW kidney shape. We're not doing the buck teeth, though it's only a matter of time. So there's a large grill. 
standard LED headlights. They're adaptive. This one has the optional laser light technology. That means you get the blue accents in there if it's laser lights. They're just a look thing for right now. They're a strong headlight pattern. When US regulations get on board, the laser light tech will do many more cool things. For now, it's just a look. Cerium gray exterior trim right there down below in the front quarter. Functional ventilation, sending cool air to the front tires and brakes. Piano black gloss accents there. Your BMW logo. Some sharp creases on that hood. Stepping back, here you're seeing the length of the 7 Series coming into play. Moved around, we can see a set of 20 inch M Sport wheels. These are standard on the M760i in that same cerium gray trim, but with sort of brushed metal borders, outer pieces. I like the designs quite a bit. They also look great with the blue M Sport brakes. These are going to be wrapped, well, quickly, the brakes. 14.7 inch diameter front rotors, 14.5 inch diameter rears. The wheels are wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires, 245 section front, 275 section rear. So good brakes, not oversized for the size of the vehicle, but good brakes and a nice, a nice contact patch. Again, not super sized at 245 and 275 but a good contact patch and a great tire. P0s are great tires. Serum gray accent down here. It's like a long L and it continues beyond the back wheel. That same gray for the mirror caps. Black window trim. Piano glass, so piano, panoramic glass roof here, but it's actually two independent sunroofs. We'll see that inside the car. Stepping back, the long rear doors. It is a very long sedan. Had trouble fitting it in my garage. Working our way around, seeing the strong character line here. Starts up there and cuts all the way to the back into the tail light. We've got a subtle trunk lip spoiler painted in the same color as the car. The tail lights are really cool. One, they've got an LED bar that goes over the license plate, across the trunk. The long L, just like that side accent there for the tail light shape. Very vibrant tail lights. Down below here, we've quad exhaust finishers, but you know what? They're actually quad exhausts. BMW is a brand that is genuine about the number of exhaust pipes. And that's in a gunmetal gray finish for the surround for that. M760i badges. That cerium gray runs along with that LED light on the tailgate. X drive badging. Like the back end for sure. Clean, stately. The whole sedan is, is on the subtler side. That big grille up front is the only real large statement piece. Now let's go to the interior. And on our way in, we'll note we've got keyless entry, so you can leave the key in your pocket, just pull on the door handle to unlock it, or rather just rest your hand inside the door handle. And to lock it, you put your fingers on those tabs right there. We have that for the front doors and for the rear runs, maximum convenience. Hopping inside. lot of options in this particular M760i. I will do my very best to remember all of them and JD will help me out with putting in some prices or any specific features that I forgot to mention. The interior of this car is in smoke white with black leather and it is the merino leather which is an upgrade. It's a four thousand dollar upgrade so it's even softer, more plush leather. I like the cord designs of these pipings here for the trim, the black contrast stitching, all of the quilting at this BMW individual kind of pressed into the seats for the front seats and for those back seats. 
It's a good looking seat design that continues even here into the armrests for the doors and on the center consoles. So I like the color. Maintenance is gonna be <laughs> a bit of an issue. Uh, as personal experience, I spent about an hour trying to clean out some of the black marks that were left on this leather by previous journalists. So if you can afford this car, you can probably afford a monthly detailing and, and I'm gonna say you're gonna need it if you choose this leather color. Looks really cool. This V12 badge illuminates at night, looks rad. Black leather for the steering wheel. Piano black trim is yet another option. It's like $1,000 for piano black trim. That's something that's usually a default in other cars. And I don't really get it. I get the white and black contrasting, piano black. I would choose more of an anthracite trim or something because the piano black just smudges and looks nasty. So why you'd pay extra for that, I'm not, not entirely sure. This one also has the rear luxury seating package, which ironically brings some things to the front seats, like a heated leather steering wheel, heated front armrests, then in the rear you get heated rear armrests. This one also has the lounge seating for the rear package. I'll get into that in a second. And panoramic LED roof panels here. Those illuminate at night with ambient lights. They look pretty rad. How premium does it feel? So we got leather up here with this white contrast stitching. We got these piano black pieces in here that I don't love, because look at this. Already see finger smudges there. Love the quilting design here on the armrests. Then these silver painted window switches. You've got a button here that will raise and lower a rear glass sunshade. One touch up and down front windows. This button here to power fold the door mirrors. Hello. This all feels very nice. They continued with leather all the way down here with that black contrast stitching. Got a button here to open and close your trunk. All the way open. And oh, you gotta hold it. Just like their SUVs, you gotta hold the trunk close. But you can do that. Looking down here, we've got a mix of rubber and uh, these metal pieces for the pedals, including the dead pedal over here, with M right there. These are the carpets, and I did my best to clean out the black smudges, but a detailer is going to do a better job here. This is one thing I missed. A little mark here up on the leather. This is just a storage area. Might stash your wallet or phone. And then we've got these metal looking, may actually be aluminum pieces, around the light switches. Piano black up here. This is all leather up on the dashboard. Looks and feels superb with white contrast stitching. The seats, the front seats have massage. That's what this button activates. They've got heating and ventilation. The ventilation and heating, I believe, are standard on this vehicle. That's awesome. Lumbar, four-way lumbar. You can adjust your thigh bolster. You can raise or lower your headrests. You can angle the seat forward, just the top half. And of course, tilt the top and bottom and uh, slide the bottom rather. Bowers and Wilkins. You get a Bowers and Wilkins 20 speaker, 1475 watt sound system. It's the diamond sound system. That is an option, yet another option. $3,400 for that one. I like the design of the speaker covers. That's pretty cool, including these, which at night glow and they look like, look like a hurricane. It's pretty rad. Nice aluminum covers for those. Down here, we've got two position memory. These are your buttons for massage. So you press that and you get three stages of massage. You can press this button here. And now I can control with these seat controls, that seat over there. So if you are chauffeuring someone, then you can control that seat without having to get up and go to the side and then control that seat. Now let's hop in. Very, very comfortable seats here. And you will, with all these power adjustments, I think it's 20-way power adjustable, 
seats. You'll be able to find a driving, a driving position that's comfortable for you. Let's fire up the car here. The steering wheel, door mirrors, and seats all are part of that memory, so they'll go back to whatever setting you left them in, or just press one of those buttons. Soft closed doors. Did I mention soft closed doors? I don't think so. I'll show you from the outside what that looks like. Soft close is a standard feature on the M760i. There it is. It's going to be a hotter day, so the AC is going to want to go crazy. Turn that off for right now. You're going to get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster as standard with some navigation data in the center. You can have navigation displayed there or it'll be blank. Not a whole lot of adjustability to this display. So if you press the DC button here on the somewhat plasticky turn signal stock, you can change up the information. You can have your fuel economy, general trip information, your pound feet of torque and horsepower, a G meter, what media you've got going on, and then it gets back to this with what drive you're in. So when you go into drive, It'll be a D. Let's just show that. Now it's a D. Now it's an R. Now it's a P. Cool. Then you get M760 just above that. This is going to be an infrared camera gauging your attention, making sure you are paying attention for the active safety systems. Here's a head-up display. Good sized, not oversized. Nothing trend setting there with the size or amount of information available through the head-up display. Steering wheel, love the stitched leather cover for the airbag. That's a nice touch, nice touch. These uh, metal covered pieces here, all of your driver assistance features. This one does have the driver assistance pro package, which means that you get extended traffic jam assist and an active driving assist system. So you can just press this button here and up to speeds of I think 40 miles per hour in traffic on the highway. You don't have to put your hand, hands on the wheel. You just need to be paying attention where again that infrared camera is going to do that. I am so warm. I'm just getting very warm talking to you. So sorry, I'm gonna have to have AC going. So that camera will just make sure you're uh, you're tuned in when you're using the traffic jam assist. Standard on this vehicle are going to be adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. You get all of the good safety features, driving aids as standard. Heated steering wheel is part of that rear luxury package I mentioned. Then over here we've got volume controls, other media information, and your voice ass assistant you can activate by saying by pressing this or by saying hello BMW, which I'm, I'm whispering hello BMW because I don't want it to be activated at this very moment. You have paddles on the steering wheel but they do not feel super high quality. You've got a metal look that feels a bit like plastic for the face of the paddle but on the back that's 100% plastic. Not a lot of travel not that big of paddles. I get it, not really this vehicle's main intent, but it is the M model. I would expect something a bit extra there for the paddles. I mentioned the turn signal stocks and window washing are not the highest quality. Do have one touch, of course. Over here, the windshield wiper one. And that's that for the cockpit of the driver. Your start stop button is here. You can turn off the start stop system just by pressing that. Glad it's a physical button. You don't have to hunt around in menus to get to it. While well, we're up here looking at the infotainment. So again, something that doesn't change for the 21 or 22 model years is that this is still a 10.25 inch display. Whereas a lot of other uh, current 21 model year BMWs I have upgraded to a 12 inch display. So it's sort of a bummer that that doesn't change. It remains a 10.25 inch and it looks by today's standards somewhat small and especially for a seven series, their flagship sedan. I wish that would be larger, but you can either touch, to, to touch the screen, you can use the control dial here, or you can use the voice command. So many different ways to use it. Go back to reverse for a sec, because I want to show you the 3D camera system on this vehicle that is standard, which is pretty neat, as is gesture control, which using certain hand motions 
sometimes works not always as intended you can get it to pan around the vehicle in 360 again if it works or you can just hit this and go to certain zones by just touching those zones that's that's what I would recommend using gestures for this is somewhat frustrating you also have automatic parking assist and backup assist so if I was in a parking space I could just hit backup assist and it'll back me out choosing to go either left or right for you to exit easily that's just if you're not super confident backing out of the space I show some of that footage in my POV drive so that's the system there's also a car wash mode where it will show you the groove so when you're getting into an automatic car wash you have to get your wheels aligned just in the tracks it'll show you exactly where they need to go to line up for that that's a pretty cool feature so that's the 360 camera system and parking assist system that is included again as standard on this vehicle you get navigation of course is standard and the display is fairly responsive and again you can control it here or here if you want to enter navigation inputs you can scribble the letters onto the top of this panel here and it will register that's all neat good time to plug my walk around video or if you want to go super in depth on any of the things that I'm mentioning from this interior or exterior walk around I show all of those in my walk around and you don't have to hear me talking that's the best part I think <laughs> driving information you can go in here and we can show your sport displays so you can look at your boost your uh, pound feet of torque, your horsepower, your oil temperature, and your G-meter. That's all there in sport displays. Energy flow, I think this makes more sense if it was a hybrid vehicle, which I've seen for their 530E I just drove recently. Trip data, that's all there in your driving information. You can go back to the car, and here's where you can get into your ambient light settings. Ambient lighting is standard. You're not going to have the scroll wheel where you can choose, like, literally any color like you do in mercedes-benz vehicle but you do have all these different options here and that should be enough for you climate control key settings exterior lighting general settings here you can pull this down and if you had apple, apple carplay working up here it would be an option up there you can set up your displays that's all within your infotainment and then you can download some apps from the bmw app store Apple CarPlay. Let's talk about Apple CarPlay for a sec. So because this is a 2020 model year, the Apple CarPlay subscription has actually lapsed in this vehicle. And though while this vehicle has wireless Apple CarPlay as standard, I don't have it to show you in this model because that subscription has lapsed. That is a bummer. So I can't show you the CarPlay, but it does take over the whole screen. BMW's integration of Apple CarPlay is very, very good. If you want to reconfigure the home screen, you can show any information in here. You just hit this button here and you can just edit it very easily. So user friendliness, big, big plus to this system. I wish the display was bigger and I don't know, just a bit more vibrant. Down here, you can hit this button and get into all of your settings for your safety features. You can configure them in terms of how early you want them to come in or how late what settings you want on or off. Getting down here, I'm gonna turn down the AC just a little bit. It's getting crazy. Got some normal looking air vents with a plastic coating. Doesn't feel all that high quality. And now, speaking of quality, we gotta do a creak test. Oh, yeah. You may not be able to hear this because, whoops, uh, because I have the mic facing me so I can talk, but there are definitely creaks here. There's not a lot of give, which indicates good quality, but the creaks, oh, that was a big one. The creaks I don't love. I do not love. That does not inspire the feeling of a premium vehicle. So that's, mm, that's disappointing. I encounter that in most German vehicles, I should say, but that still is just unsettling a bit. This whole area in here, so the CD player deleted for the 21 model year, but everything else, like your presets, are going to be the same. Got this aluminum trim here, AC settings. Here are your ventilated, sorry, rather your heated first, then your ventilated seats. And that's for both the driver and passenger seat. Slide this back. Look at all this peanut black trim. This car has 3,000 miles on it, I believe. Scratched up. Smudges or whatever, but the scratches are just not fun. That's, that's peanut black for you. 
You get standard wireless smartphone charging, a USB port there, this same metal look trim, pretty sure it's plastic around the cup holders. Here is your key. So we'll have the M tricolor on the side. Pretty hefty, good quality feeling key for sure. With the, um, and that is aluminum because you can feel the coldness from the AC. Unlock, press the BMW logo for lock, trunk release and panic button there. Yeah, good feeling key. Not special in any way for the 7 series, however. This is another thing that doesn't feel super high quality. And in fact, on other BMW vehicles, it has in some cases been broken, but when you press it, it just, I worry it could break. I do. You do have leather all up here, that same awesome stitching quilting design up on the center console area, a V12 badge, just in case you forgot. So you saw it on the uh, tread plates on your way in, but just in case you forgot, you need the reminder while you're driving, you have V12 right there. Parking brake, auto hold, glad it's a physical button, just like the start stop system, turning it on and off is very easy to do. Press this at any time to bring up your camera system, rather not at any time, you have to be stopped or moving very slowly for that to work. All of your drive modes are here. So you know, unlike a lot of other BMW vehicles, the drive modes don't pop up here, they just show up in the digital gauge cluster. So if I hit Eco Pro, changes the color and goes to Eco Pro, comfort, Changes the display a bit. Sport, a red backing there now to the display, but that's Sport Plus. Sport Individual and the regular Sport, two different modes, same backing, then Adaptive. One other different skin. So again, not too much that's going to change with the gauge cluster, but the drive modes show up here, not here as a redundancy. So those are your drive modes, your gear selector, feels fairly solid. This does not feel cheap, but not covered in leather or anything like that. Rather, it is covered in leather. I'm crazy. The front is not in leather. This is in the piano black. The back is covered in leather. Forward for reverse, back for drive, over here for your manual mode, P for park. Your iDrive system controller is over here. I already mentioned you can scribble onto it. You can control it by this. You can scroll this. You've got some hotkeys here including your map system, media, communication, your AK, your smartphone, and navigation. Press this right here and open up the center console. Very small center console. You can see I have just a couple items in here that takes up most of the space available to you. You have another DC socket, USB-C port, so that was a regular USB-A. This is a USB-C. That's in the center console, so not much you can store in there. The leather up on the dashboard feels superb. The metal look trim looks okay. This is feels to be a real aluminum piece for the glove box. Not a big glove box here. So storage isn't the best so far. The door pockets are good sized. You can stick things in there. But in here, the wireless smartphone charging and two small cup holders, and then a smaller center console up there. Doesn't, doesn't give you the feeling of tons of space. The rear view mirror, nothing special, it's just got a cheaper plastic backing. You can see the Alcantara headliner. That is a standard feature. Very, very nice. The dome lighting here. Looking cool. Your sunroof. Tilt. Slide. That's as far back as she goes, though. And our sun visors coming down. Same Alcantara on those. Good size vanity mirror with a light there. Bring it over and it does slide. And it slides all the way back there. Well, tiny little crack, but the slide is the most important part. And then you have the piano black trim. Even, I guess this is why you're paying for it. It's, it's not just on the dashboard. The piano black is everywhere. Though again, that's gonna smudge and not look great. You've got these metal look borders to it, pinot black there, so it's not just a piece of black plastic. That's good. All right, let's go to the rear seats now. Alrighty. Soft close. Thank you, thank you. 
We're going to go to the other side because that's that's really the choice seat. If you're being chauffeured on the way, show the fuel door. 93 octane is what they recommend. 91 is what we have available here in Southern California, so we use that. No capless fueling. Disappointing BMW. All right, opening up. Very big opening here. That's stately, having a door that opens this wide, so easy to get in. And if you have a chauffeur, they're gonna close it for you. And this isn't a Rolls Royce, so you can't close it yourself. All right, looking in the back, just like the front, we've got leather everywhere with the contrast stitching. This is all very nice, the same quilting design. Here are gonna be some controls. I'll get into those in a second for all your sun protection. One touch up and down windows. This has the rear lounge seating package, which I mentioned earlier, and that means you get this big, beautiful center console. You get rear seat ventilation and massage and heating, power recline, and a footrest, which I'll show you in a sec. You also get these gorgeous pillows. Supple, very nice. So that's all part of the rear lounge seating package along with these two 12 inch displays. I will show these controls as I mentioned later. If you want to just press one button and have it just do its whole reclining thing, we can do that now. You have to hold the button, rather. This seat's gonna recline, that one's gonna move forward. Takes a moment. Gonna really get out of your way. Okay, and we're there. When you want to foot, fold down the footrest, press this button here. Yet another area I cleaned obsessively because white leather, what are you gonna do? So that's your footrest. You do have to be a shorter individual for that footrest to actually make sense. I'll show you what I mean when I get in. Door handles, didn't show these on the front, but they are mechanical. They feel pretty solid. Oh, ashtray, yeah. Built for the Germans here in the US. People smoke still, not I, not anyone I knows, but uh, not anyone I knows, not anyone I know. Miles, you're losing it. These are also cool at night. These glow sort of a, just a very soft white light. V12. Yeah, it's on the tread plates back here too. Just as a reminder. Okay, let's get in. I'll show what that's like using the footrest. So, six feet tall. Without the footrest, well, I'll put it up and talk about that in a second, but if I want to use the footrest, my legs are gonna be bent. This is, this is what I'll be working with. Knees bent, not comfortable. And this is fully reclined as well, so yeah. You're gonna have to be shorter for this to actually make sense. Instead, I'll be cleaning that later. Instead, we will just raise up the footrest and appreciate how much leg room you do have. I'm stretching my legs all the way out now and instead I just want to rest them on the floor. This is just fully lounging in the back seats. I, I get the lounge seating package now. Very, very comfortable. And this pillow, I can't get, oh, it just feels so good. Love this pillow. Yeah, this is, this is very nice. All right, let's close up that door. Did I even, I didn't get it close enough for it to do a soft close. Look, you got the piano black trim even up here, just over my shoulder. Alcantara headliner. Looks and feels very nice. Two different intensities of light right here. The same piano trim on the grab handle for the rear passenger. Hmm. Yeah, I'm comfy, guys. All right, so you got a center console here that you can open up and pull out with only the slightest bit of difficulty. A tray. So this is all covered in leather, so you can just use this as a work surface. This would be very nice. If you needed to get some stuff done before a meeting, just throw down your laptop and just get to work, because this is pretty cool. 
slide that back in, kink it a little bit so that it stows neatly. And that's that. Not a whole lot of room for anything else in there. But hey, you got a tray. Did I go down? No, oh, there it is. Here you have a tablet that can control much the same things that these 12 inch displays can. So let me turn this on, let you have a look at it. You can show your navigation system, see where you're going and input a destination if you need your driver to be updated. Then your car functions, same settings as up in the front. You can adjust the interior lighting color, the ambient light color rather. You can change up the position of your seat. You can choose what seat massage you would like. These different ones. And the tablet gets fun with this because it shows you a picture of where the massage is actually activating on your body. Seat climate control, your seat heating, heating settings. You can actually go in here to your climate control settings. If you want armrest heating or not. Then some apps, just like the front, that you can download from the App Store. And your media information, of course. Still remembers my iPhone, but again, not CarPlay. So that's all on these displays back here. Pretty user-friendly. If you want to control independently of that display, say you're in this position and you don't want to reach all the way forward, and you don't want to slide the seat back to an easier access position, you can just press this button here. And this tablet, that when it starts up, by the way, makes no buts about, about the fact that it is a Samsung tablet. I guess that was a compromise BMW made by letting them be their proprietary tablet makers. But here you can go into your car and adjust the same things, interior lighting, seats. Let's go into seat massage because I want to show you this. Look, here's all the parts of your body it's activating with your massage. And then choose the intensity, much like just choosing the intensity here That's all on this little tablet here. And the tablet works just fine. It's not impressive. Um, it's not bespoke. It's a Samsung tablet. But you do get V12. So it's a, it's a BMW skin on an interface that is very clearly Samsung. But hey, it's pretty neat. You get a tablet. So this is going to go back here. And then it will clamp itself down so it's not going to go anywhere. You can slide this back here. And this is another place where pressing down on this doesn't feel obscenely high quality, not certainly for the price point. You've got quad zone climate control, so you can turn on your heating or ventilation from back here. For either of these rear seats, adjust your climate controls, a couple cup holders, a DC socket. Then here are your seating adjustments. Zoom in. If I want to go completely upright, you press that button and that's what it's doing in my seat right now and then it will actually bring that seat back again just pressing one button if I want to independently control that seat it's adjusting also automatically the display so that it'll be more facing my head instead of all the way facing down if I want to independently control that seat I just press the L2 button or I'm saying L it's the shape of the seat just two button and then I can control where I want this to go tilt get out of my way or again just press that one press and hold that one button there to go into full recline this is the footrest i already showed you lumbar control for this back seat massaging we already showed you this glass roof here just like the front has these ambient lights that glow at night it looks so cool you get some vanity mirrors here hi And now I can show these. So if I want to put the sun visor up on the back glass, press the left one. Takes but a moment. If I want to put the visor up above my head, press this right button. For full protection, I'm also going to press this left button here to put the visor up on the left side and the right button to put it up on the right side. So now we are fully protected in the back seat of this M760i from the sun. It can't get in here, can't mess with your business. 
yeah, this is this is pretty cool. All this stuff back here is pretty cool. Very executive, very plush, very fun. And by the way, you can adjust all these things in the tablet or on the screen too. If you don't want to press buttons, if you want to touch screens, then you can do that. All right, I'm going to show the trunk. The trunk in the M760i is 18 cubic feet of space, which is on par with the S class and better than the BMW S8. It's a good size trunk. You, of course, cannot fold those rear seats. So, chauffeurs, you're going to have to be able to fit your passenger's luggage in here, and I guess you're just going to have a backpack or something. But a good size trunk, and I already showed you that it's power opening and close. All right, last couple things to do. Let's grab our big bottle for the big bottle test. Close this door. Slide back our cup holders. Take out the key. Will it fit in the cup holder? No, not even close. Center console, I'm opening it just to laugh because not a chance will it fit in here just sort of sits on the borders. Door pocket, you are our last hope for the front compartment. Oh, it's not looking good, gents. Ladies and gents, it is not looking good. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Glove box, we're not gonna mess with. So for the front compartment, it is a big old fail, and the rear door pockets are about the same size as the front. So the BMW M760i fails the big bottle test. Disappointing. Very disappointing. And right before I rev it, yeah, just a little. I'm gonna ask that if you've been enjoying this video, you please like, comment, and share it. And maybe subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the other content I put out. It means so much to me. Hit that bell to get notified. And now, without further ado, let's rev it up. Oh, enjoy that V12 and take it for a drive. <laughs> All right, guys, no launch control in the M760i. So for quick acceleration, we're just going to go to Sport Plus drive mode, which I've done now, and then we're just going to mat the throttle. Here we go. Oh, mercy. I'm not even going to tell you how fast that just was. That was crazy. This is over a 5,000 pound sedan. How does it accelerate like that? That's absurd. I mean, I know practically how. It's called a 6.6-liter twin-turbo V12 and a good all-wheel drive system, but come on. It picks up speed so easily. It's like effortless. Man, I love this engine. I'm going to take it out of Sport Plus because it's just going to want to play all day. Let's go into adaptive drive mode, which is sort of like a catch-all. Depending on your driving behavior, it'll soften the suspension or it'll you know, add resistance to the steering, quick and throttle response, all that good stuff. We're just gonna leave it in adaptive so I can talk about this engine more. That 6.6 .6 liter twin turbo V12 is pulled from the Rolls-Royce Wraith. And in this application, it doesn't, it doesn't make 630 horsepower like the Wraith, it makes 601, just 601, and 627 pound-feet of torque connected to a ZF eight-speed automatic gearbox and BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system. Uh, if you do it right, it, this car will get to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds. Three and a half, that's supercar levels, not crazy supercar, but supercar levels of acceleration in something this big. So impressive. You cannot understate the performance of the V12. And when you're not on it, it's like the smoothest internal combustion engine you can have. It's just so buttery, you just, ooze into the throttle and it just builds speed so readily. This is a very good transmission as well. The all-wheel drive system does wonders in terms of acceleration and gives you confidence as you're going through a corner. There's stability there. It has adaptive M suspension system and it's got an air suspension so it really soaks up a lot of the harshest bumps in the road. Your undulations are smooth. Only the really 
really hard bumps do I feel in this cabin? I, I mean, you feel all the bumps, right? You know they're there, but as an impact on your body, only the really harshest stuff. If you hit a pothole, doesn't matter how good the suspension is, you will feel it. And the ride quality and insulation is very, very good. But even though this platform was shared with the old Rolls Royce Ghost, the new Ghost planar platform is just better. It's just a cut above. And so you feel more legitimate in paying over $300,000 for that sedan. But this is superb. This is a really good riding sedan. And the wind noise is just cut down so much. That dual pane glass, the laminate that they put on the windshield, it just rides smooth. This is just a very smooth riding sedan. We'll talk about it when I get up to a corner, how it handles, but it's pretty impressive given the girth of this vehicle. There's a bit of body roll, which is just, you can't avoid it. It's to be expected, but it feels stable through a corner. And that's sort of what you'd expect from a BMW M Sport or full on M product. This is just an M Sport, just an M Sport with a twin turbo V12. And really, um, lends credibility to the idea that a person who would daily drive this would find enjoyment here, for sure. There is also, of course, comfort drive mode if you really want to cruise gently, calmly, easily. And that's going to cut the throttle response just a little bit, not quite as much as Eco Pro drive mode. I'm not even going to touch that one today, but there is that drive mode if you want to save fuel, which I guess it's a valiant effort, but it's a twin turbo V12. So this is getting 13 city, 20 highway and 16 combined MPG. Not quite as bad as a Ram T-Rex, but still pretty bad. Comfort drive mode is kind of where it's at because if you press harder on the throttle, it will still give you all the power, jeez. All the power that is available to you, which is so much, but mostly it's gonna cut that throttle response and just kind of ease into your ride quality. Just enjoy your full bodied plush sedan and these seats these 20-way power adjustable seats are so comfortable hit that massage button choose from one of your several different massage options and just enjoy but okay have a corner here i'm gonna go into sport plus drive mode and just take it with some gusto and see how it does here we go hard on the brakes oh they're good take the corner yes yes yeah, okay, that's fast. It's very stable in a corner, shockingly so, given the girth of the sedan. You could honestly be forgiven if you wanted to go to a Canyon Road in this thing. It wouldn't be my vehicle of choice, but if you ended up there, you'd do just fine. You'd keep up with some very, very quick, lighter weight vehicles, let's put it that way. You also have manual mode here, just because I'm on the highway, I'll show it. You can go to manual mode, you can use the paddles, and the shifts are very quick. It's a great transmission. Yeah, they're, they're super quick. It's a great gearbox. I'm having fun. Okay, all right, out of manual mode. That's a thing you can do. Another thing you can do is activate the full suite of driver aids with the active driving assist right now. So you could take your hands off the wheel if you wanted to for a short period of time, keeping in, checking in, and it will take curves of the road very easily, no problems there. It doesn't let you keep your hands all off the wheel for that long before it wants you to kind of check back in, but it also has extended traffic jam assist, so up to speeds of like 40 miles per hour, you can keep your hands completely off the wheel as long as your eyes are forward. Now it also has lane change assist, we'll try that out here. Indicate you want to go, now it's going to change lane for me. It makes sure there's a spot, and then it moves to the center of the next lane. That works well most of the time. Visibility is excellent, being that it's a sedan, not an SUV, you don't have a big C pillar to worry about. Chauffeur's job is, is pretty easy in the sedan, that's for sure. Now let's talk about the M760i's competition because again, it doesn't exist in a silo. That particular buyer has options. What are they? Price tag for the M760i starts just under $159,000. It is a chunk of change. The S63 starts at $152,595 if I believe. JD, correct me if I'm wrong and that makes 603 horsepower from its twin turbo V8. So fewer cylinders, four fewer cylinders, but two more horsepower. Uh, it also, compared to the 16 combined MPG of the M760i, it gets 20 combined MPG, fewer cylinders, and somehow more power, but still better fuel economy. 20 combined MPG is pretty darn good. It has the same size trunk, 18 cubic feet. It has a higher top speed, 
the M760i is limited to 155 miles per hour, but the S63 all the way to 186. Crazy. So that's that sedan. You also have the Audi S8. That's the bargain of the bunch at 130, 131, 785 or something like that. JD will correct me again, but it is a bargain by comparison. It does have a twin turbo V8, no V12 in that one, and it makes less power than both this and the S63 at 563 horsepower. It will get to 60 because of the Quattro all-wheel drive system. Yes, the S63 and this both have all-wheel drive, but the Quattro somehow just better and it gets to 60 in 3.3 seconds. It's a very quick sedan. And top speed is same as the M760i at 155 miles per hour. Shockingly, the fuel economy, even though it's a twin turbo V8 and not a V12, is the same as the M760i. So it gets 16 combined at BG. The cargo space in that one, the trunk volume, is way less than this and the S-Class. It's 13 cubic feet of space. So, which would I recommend to that discerning gentleman or gentle lady looking for a big brute of a sedan, lots of power, not quite as showy as a Rolls-Royce, not quite as expensive as a Bentley, uh, not as expensive as the S65 AMG at 230 grand for that one, which one would I choose? If I was going to drive this vehicle all the time and I was in love, infatuated with a V12 engine, this M760 M760i makes a case for itself. I don't quite love the exterior design. It's not ravishing in any way. The interior is very nice, there's some things that feel bland for this class of, of sedan, like the dashboard. The technology isn't quite on the cutting edge, certainly not like the new S-Class or even the current S63, but all the other measures are good. The engine is great, the driving experience is great. The S8 is the best looking of the bunch. I really think it looks so clean. It's a striking looking sedan. The interior isn't quite up to snuff with the M760i and the S63, in my opinion, and I don't know, there's just, there's something to the potency of the AMG 4 liter V8 and the potency of this V12. Audi's twin turbo V8, not quite as exciting. I'm gonna say the S8 is out for me, even though it is a bargain. I think it's between this and the S63. Let's see how the turning radius is. Oh, that's tight. You do have rear wheel steering helping you out. The S63 is my preferred pick because if you are at all planning on having rear passengers or if you're planning on being chauffeured, the cabin in the S63 is a bit nicer. The technology is more advanced and the new S-Class is bringing crazier stuff with it. The engine is very good. The four liter twin turbo V8 in that, in, in that car is very good. The driving experience is not quite as exciting and engaging as the M760i, but it's still very good and I think it looks better. I would save the $6,000, get the S63, and then maybe add on a couple options that you really want. That'd be my pick. Again, there's nothing wrong with the M760i apart from the extra money you have to spend for it and a few niggles that I have for the interior and exterior. Nothing terribly wrong with it. I would pick the S63, just me personally. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm going to enjoy this V12. While I still can, don't die V12.